This is the game I made for a game jam that I recently hosted and also participated in. Instead of a theme, we had to make a game with a mystery art pack. The game I made have resource gathering, crafting, customization, and of course fighting. Just by looking on all of the system this game contains, I believe I would be quite impressed to hear that this was made during a 3 day game jam. Today, we're gonna talk about how I pulled it off. In this video, I'm gonna go behind the scenes of how I made this game. You might wanna check out the overview video I made of this game jam to get some further context or if you just wanna see what the other participants did in this game jam. Now you might think I had an advantage since I was the host of this jam and I got to pick the art pack. And well, yeah, maybe a little bit, but I actually selected the art pack about two weeks before the jam happened. The jam starts and it took me about an hour to figure out what I wanted to do for a game. This is how I came up with my idea. I had recently watched videos on game design, specifically about how games beat the grind and how some games use synergies to spice up the game. I thought back on a game jam I had finished not too long ago and I thought, hey, I can make something similar to that but spice it up with some enemies, crafting and synergies with different equipments. I wrote down a minimum viable product but also my dream version of this game. If I achieved the minimum viable products quickly, I could implement the things I had under my dream version of this game. But as we all know, life is unpredictable sometimes. Why do I hear boss music? I only did the minimum viable product just on the finish line. I have about two hours left. Okay, let's get to some development. Since I made games with Unity for longer than 5 years, I've become quite comfortable with it. Over time I've built up tools that I will use for almost any Unity project I make. I always start by importing these into Unity. I use UniRx, Xtenject, and I have a bunch of utility scripts I've written myself. Things like state machine management, sound management, other utilities. And these tools freeze up so much time, so many hours, so I get more time to work on the crafting or spell system for example. All of day one went towards setting up all of the systems. Before we can have anything playable, I had a lot of groundwork I needed to lay out if I wanted customization at the extent I wanted. Because of this, I sacrificed the early hours of the jam to build up my systems so that I could hopefully be rewarded by the later hours of the jam with tools that would allow me to add a bunch of content quickly at the end. Let me explain. This might seem like a simple attack, but behind the scenes, this is a spell. A spell that can be cast by anything, it's not hardcoded to the player. If I wanted to make a similar spell but with a bigger range, I could just copy this spell and change the range variable. This is what one day of development looked like. It's not much on the surface, but behind the scenes lies a very modular system. We'll look at this soon. Day 2, I woke up early. Early for me, okay? I implemented health bars. Alright, so let's check it out. I got a health bar, looks very nice. Boom, 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 boom. You can also punch the piggy. Don't punch you. AI for neutral creatures like pigs and cows, you know. And AI for aggressive creatures. So we got a, we got a spider and it can attack me. Oh, ouch. Oh, that was close. I used state machines. Wow. To handle the logic of the creatures. Oh great, now it's gonna show some code. I love code. Don't tell me what to do. You know what? I'm not gonna show you any code at all now, okay? Eh? Eh? Oh, good. Wait, no. You know what? I'm gonna show you all of the code. All of the code. <laughs> Coffee. We have a wander state where the creature in an interval randomly rotates and walks forward. Both the neutral and aggressive creatures uses this same state, but when attacked they behave differently. The neutral creature will flee, it will run away, whilst the aggressive enemy will instead attack the player. The reason I can reuse the wander state for both neutral and aggressive creatures is that this state is also assigned a rule for transitioning. The neutral creatures uses a transition called Wonder State Transition Neutral. It checks if it's been damaged. If that's the case, 
the flee state is selected and it will run away. I don't understand anything you just said. I don't care, but you're gonna listen, okay? The aggressive enemies will check if it's been hurt by the player or if the player is within aggro range. It will then transition into the attack state and charge towards the player and attack it. Okay, maybe maybe less technical talk, but let's just say it took me quite some time to implement the AI. I almost forgot to mention this. Remember the spell system? Yeah, the AI for the enemies uses the exact same system to attack the player. So if I made a fire attack, then with the click of a button I can make so the player can cast it or the enemies can cast it. I love this spell system. Ah, ah. I don't think I've ever made an inventory system in my life. So I found a tutorial by CodeMonkey and honestly his approach worked really well. I was surprised how quickly I got it together. By the end of day 2 we had added health bars, creatures, half working inventory, also a lose state when the player is out of lives. It's almost a game but there's no game loop, no enemy spawn and there's no way to get new items. The last day I had to implement crafting, resource gathering and most importantly add content to give the game some flavor. Different weapons, different enemies. I was glad this was a 3 day game jam. I guess otherwise you would have been screwed. You're goddamn right. Good thing it was 3 days. Day 3 I woke up a bit later than I would have wanted, but that's fine. Getting a good amount of sleep was on my priority list. Less sleep, less productivity. Alright, now we need a way to get items, so I put together a crafting menu. I added recipes enemies could drop that would unlock new things you can craft. All of the systems were coming together, so it's time to add some content to the game. I made a bunch of weapons and equipment, mostly recycling previous things and changing the variables around. Copy the spider, change the sprites, now it's a bat! CONTENT! Everything was coming together beautifully. Or so, he thought. Three hours left and I realized the head and body armor doesn't actually do anything. Well, they do change the appearance of the player, depending on what you're wearing. I thought that was a funny touch. Anyway, a word. Synergy. I wanted more synergies in the game. Well, there wasn't any. I wanted the player to experiment with different things, try new strategies and customization of equipment was the way to go with this game I thought. So with the tiny time I had left, it was worth giving it a shot. And as you would expect, I... I... I freaking pulled it off, baby! Look at this item, it gives you health regeneration. Epic! What about an item that makes you take less damage? Yes, please! You wanna go fast? You can go really fast with these boots. All you need is this recipe. What about a combination of stats? Right here, bulky armor is the bulkiest armor you can get, but it's quite slow. Okay, okay, I'm being a bit dramatic, but anyway, I'm very pleased I managed to get this into the game. There's not a lot of synergies, but there are some different things you can experiment with. Grab the boots of speed with the slow hitting hammer to quickly get in and do a big AOE damage. Grab the tankiest items but they slow you down and use the lethal close to range dagger. Why not go all out on health regeneration? Anyway, the reason I think this is one of my most successful game games I've done ever is not only that I managed to pull together a lot of cool game systems, it's that I got to build a complete tiny game with mechanics that I wanted to experiment with for a while. I got a taste of what my dream version of this game could look like. And I think I could probably build on top of this prototype and maybe one day release this game but a bit differently. Also, this jam was very successful cause I got to experiment with something I haven't done before. Creating an inventory system. I actually learned something this game jam. Programming wise. Let me get off my high horse for a moment. Reality of it is, not all game jams I do turn out great. This is kinda like a straw in the haystack. I've been making games for around 10 years and the amount of painful programming moments I've gone through is a lot. But it does get easier over time. I'm still gonna make shitty projects here and there, but out of 100 thirds, at least one will be a polished third. Perfect analogy. I'm not sure what the moral of the story is, but at least maybe you got some entertainment out of this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Since I kind of started this rapping game developer meme kind of a thing, allow me to...
Tell you about the story of how I made this game I coded some things and it's kinda lame But the look you over here is State Machine! That's pretty cool but tell me about the costumes please Alright, here's the code Well look at if I was my eyes if I had one more to this it would probably explode Boom! The moral of the story is The moral of the story is uh, The moral of the story is I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know.